Welcome to the Meetings Podcast, the meeting organizer's podcast source for what's new in the meetings and events industry. Meetings Podcast is a conversation with a variety of voices that looks at events, meetings, and media. Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. Hey, podcast listeners, today's show is brought to you, of course, by IMAX America, but we also have a new technology sponsor. Um, it's not that new, it's kind of an old one, but um, full disclosure, I'm an investor and founder in this sponsor, uh, AV for Planners. AVplanners.com is designed to help meeting organizers vet and negotiate AV. We did a slight pivot this year. Our clients love our service, but didn't want to pay for it, so... They realized they were saving money and time, but most did not want to upset the apple cart on the way they do things. It's a new thing. So we decided to shift gears and went to the third-party planning companies who now provide this service to ensure their clients are getting the correct AV and labor. Uh, For those of you who are our existing clients, don't worry. We're still keeping our existing clients, but we we have shifted. Um, and it's working nicely to third-party and um, independent planners who want to do this for their clients. So they get a uh, commission from the AV companies for bringing in the business. So if it sounds familiar, it's just the way they do for room blocks now with hotels. So another revenue stream for these companies. Um, And so here's how it works. Here's how it works. Um, On the behalf of the client, AV planners gets the in-house AV bid and then two outside AV bids or basically three outside AV bids um, and puts all three of them side by side and gives our client a one page summary with ratings of all the equipment and labor for their proposal. Behind that are all the reasons why uh, we made these decisions. So the third party or independent planner can provide the best experience possible for their clients and attendees at the correct price with all the correct equipment. So if you're interested in learning more, head on over to avforplanners.com backward slash AV power pack to sign up for a consultation. When you go there, you can also get free tips and tricks for site surveys and what to look out for. Also, we have a nice clause that we put in there to add to your hotel contract if you want more control over what you are being charged for AV and what you're getting. So thank you. Um, Today's show was a really fun one for me. Uh, we catch up with an old friend of mine, Jason Perkins from Make Animals. He's an art director. I worked with Jason for several years um, and honestly is one of the most talented art directors in the meetings and events business. He does some terrific work with wide screen visuals. Um, plus, he's just a fantastic guy and it was great to catch up with him. We hadn't talked in a while. Um, so let's get right into the show. And uh, I do appreciate you being here. So thank you. And I'll fill in the gaps after the show. Welcome back to the Meetings Podcast. This is Mike McAllen from Grass Shack Events and Media and AV for Planners. And today we have my friend, my old friend, Jason Perkins. He's not old, but um, he's much younger than I. He's art director with Make Animals. Uh, He is the, actually, you're art director and you're the founder owner of it, correct? Correct. Okay. Jason graduated to the world of events in 2000 after several several years assisting traditional advertising agencies with the internet and digital media boom. With an ability to see the whole show, at the conceptual level, he works with companies to ensure their event communicates a clear, consistent visual message from the first media touch to the moment he the lights go up on stage. That's awesome. Boy, that's like a little bit of a run-on sentence. I must have wrote it. That's <laughs> So, um, J- Jason, um, I have several questions for you. I want to first thank you for talking to me. We haven't talked in a long time. Yes, yes. Thanks for having me, Mike. It's, uh, uh, it's fun to be here. Yeah, and you have a really good uh, first step on your baseline drive to the basket. I want everyone to know. Well, it, it's, it's fading over the years, but uh, oh, I like to think it's still there. Yeah, you still have that triple threat. Going right by. I know. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Let's start out. Um, and uh, what's your favorite quote? You know, um, I think I, I have two. I, I was thinking about this because I've never been one of those guys that like keeps a bunch of quotes around. Uh, and I like to keep them short and sweet. So uh, my first favorite quote is by my favorite musician, Mr. Tom York of 
uh, the Radiohead fame. And it's simply idiot slow down. I think uh, I think we could all stand to slow down sometimes. Uh, I know that when I slow down, things get a lot better. And my second one might throw you off a bit, but uh, it's actually from the Bible. Shortest verse in the Bible. God is love. I think if we all would just love a little more, yeah. a lot of this nasty stuff going down in the world would uh, start to ease a bit. So, I agree. so those are my favorite quotes. I agree. Very cool. And we do need to slow down. It's hard, yeah. too, because life keeps getting faster and faster. It's right. It's true. And in this freelance world, boy, whew, they'll take you right away if you let them. Yes. Okay. So can you take us through the – we, we kind of already talked about your path, but I think you can go a little bit more into it uh, in how you got into the events and meetings industry. Um, yeah. So uh, I moved out to San Francisco after college. Um, and uh, taking advantage of an internship I, I completed in Walnut Creek, California. And uh, one of our clients was a, a DMC. Um, and they had all these great little quick branding projects for, you know, President's Club, one-off sales events and whatnot. And through that company, I got hired to do a show called Ariba Live, uh, which was this world tour. Ariba was like the baby of the dot-com boom. Uh, and I was uh, on that. Yeah, I know. Right. (laughs) And, um, and, and in doing that event, I I was like, wow, this, this is, this is perfect for my ADD. You know, you, you, you're doing print, you're doing web, you're doing promotion, et cetera, et cetera. And so in, in getting involved with that, I ended up hopping over to a a different uh, company, uh, to become an art director in the world of events that led to freelance that led to moving to Portland. And here we are on meetings podcast. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so that was great i remember working with you at that company you jumped to right yeah yeah exactly it was called beyond cool um you know i consider the owners of that uh company it's now called bc creative patrick pfeiffer and mike swan early uh, mentors in my career uh still good friends wait what uh, is it called again BC? Uh, it's called bc creative now um and that was just a branding change we we called it beyond cool whenever we first started uh, you know, everything was had to have this sort of funky name uh, back in the late 90s. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and and yeah, yeah. So those early mentors, uh, you know, they gave me my first job right out of college. Love those guys. So shout out to the to the fellows over at BC Creative. Yeah, that was amazing. That was a fun, crazy ride, that whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, the up and down <laughs> of Ariba. I mean, if anyone listening knows Ariba, it was like, you know, <laughs> Oh, well, I, I shouldn't. I should be nice, but it, it was. Um, well, it was. It's a real dot com like story. I mean, yeah. we lived it. We went right through it with them. That was the crazy thing. The, the world marketplace, the bazaar of the internet, right? Like, yeah. And, and it was pretty much a procurement company, right? You would you would go yeah. on the internet to they're get, still around, get your yeah. Eyes and 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 then try to, um, you know get your tomato crates from a farmer in Missouri. <laughs> I remember that was like one of their marketing examples and I was just shaking my head going, really? Is that really what the internet's for? Getting tomato crates? <laughs> That's funny. But it, yeah, it, it, no, I use it with a client now, oh, Gap. We do stuff for Gap and they use it. Really? Well, yeah, still. And it's it's very antiquated now. It's really hard to use. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's really hard. Like I just, I spend like, you know, whenever you, you know how those things are, procurement stuff. It's just, yeah. sometimes it's a real pain in the ass. So it's, anyway. It's a necessary part of our world though, I'm sure. All right. So what's the biggest challenge you've encountered into entering this industry or starting your own, your own company? Because I think a lot of people, a lot of people in our industry are freelancers. So yeah, um, I would say. You know, it's not a problem these days, but whenever I first decided to go freelance, it was just confidence, right? Like you've got this job, it's got benefits and you, you, you find that to truly be creative and do design work, at least for me anyway, it's really hard to do that sitting in an office with a lot of people around, you You know, I work early in the morning, late at night. So you find yourself on salary, but you're working, you know, all the time. And the, the sort of writing was on the wall as a, as a, someone who wanted to do design work, that freelance was the way to go. But, you know, you got a brand new baby. You're suddenly like walking out the door of this great company to go do it on your own. And so just finding that confidence to like, you know, trust that you have great context, trust that you have good skill 
and, and, and get moving was the biggest challenge I faced um, early on. Now, it's just like learning to say no, right? Um, if you have a great network and you do good work, it's, I don't want to say easy to operate as a freelancer in this industry, but it's kind of, it's kind of how it's done. And, um, you know, inevitably where I say yes to that job that is maybe borderline, like the phone will ring an hour later with something incredible that is suddenly a really big conflict. So, you know, it goes back to my quote, you know, slow down, right? Just slow mm -hmm. down, think a little bit. So is it you? Your company is it? Yes, you have, you have, you have a team though, don't you? Yeah, people? so I have a team of um, three or four guys. Uh, you know, we, we accept women as well. Currently, none will work with me. I might be a little smelly. Uh, it's understandable. Um, <laughs> but I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a freelance artist. Um, Ten ninety nine, whatever you you know, however, however you want to refer to it. Um, I have a couple trusted partners, a fellow named Brian Barons and John Campbell, that I've known for years. Uh, they're both really hardworking guys. Uh, who sh sort of have complementary complementary um, skill sets to me, so we can tackle you know most media that's involved with an event when we team up. Mm -hmm. yeah, they do their own thing as well, uh, but usually we find ourselves um, tackling projects together, going on site together, and getting it done. But at the end of the day, it's just me sitting in a room uh, uh, at Make Animals. Yeah, pounding away. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Um I, I have all these different questions. I was looked at your uh, Make Animals site yesterday. I saw you writing a segue, and I thought that was <laughs> really great. You did good. You said you did a terrible job, but you did really good. Well, the, the, you know, it looks really easy. That is not an easy uh, a, an easy thing to do the first time you get on it if you don't have any advice. So, you know, for anyone uh, who rides a segue for the first time, core strength is the key. Keep that core tight, and it's a it? problem. Yes. I, I don't think they told me that because they wanted to see me flop around like I was on a probably yeah, it's more fun to do that. Yeah. Laughed at me, so you know, dig through my Facebook timeline. You can you can share it. You can yeah, you you grasp it very quickly. And I and I thought it was cool the way make animals you have your website is just basically a, a slate. And then you well, said, "Thanks for calling that cool." <laughs> no, I mean I just think it's it's nice because it's like really, you know, where's most of the people in the world? They're on Facebook. Yeah, true, true. And you have that, and that really shows your work and your personality on there. I like it. I thought, you know, I had a conversation with my uh, business partner about that. Like, you know, what are we doing, really? Who's coming to our site and stuff? Like, anyway, but I think it's very cool the way it is. I mean, maybe you didn't try to do that, but you, you know, Jason, you're just cool. Well, well, thank it's, you. It was, you it was cool. So it, it, it's the old, um, what do we call that? The temporary page, like the under construction page. I just I put that up because I realized there's not a chance in hell I was ever going to get around to making a website. Um, and then Facebook got big and social yeah. media got big, and I was like, "You're right. Wow, I don't need it, but but this will direct them to it." So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. very it's a cool. quick experience. It is. And that's what you, that's what you build is experiences. So, tell us um, what the moment was when you knew you made the right decision. When that aha moment was there, you know. Whew, let's see. Um, I think the, 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 the first time I realized I made the right decision was about three or four months in when, you know, the checks start rolling in because you, you, you got to do some work for a while, then you got to send some invoices and the money starts coming in. And, you know, sadly, uh, once you have that steady income, it's whenever you can sort of relax and start looking at what you're doing. So I, I, it's a bit of a lame aha moment, but, mm -hmm. but really, really, I, I guess, you know, the bigger one would have been, the first time that I got called because someone was truly like, it wasn't a contact I already had. They'd seen some work I'd done and went, Hey, I want you to do this. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, this is working. I, I wish I could remember the exact project it was. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, you want to be recognized for doing good stuff, not just for being a body who can push a few buttons. Right. Right. No, no, you're right. No. And that's what it's about. And I always think of you as like one of the best, like salesmen I've ever met. Like, I mean, I know you're not a salesman, but, you're, but when I saw you like present a stuff, I thought, wow, he's like, you're really kind of honest about what you're doing or not honest, but you're like real, like you see other people getting up and it just seems like a lot of BS, but you really dig what you do. Oh, well, thanks for that. You, you know, know my, my father is a salesman and, um, uh, I try not to sell, I guess. Like I, you sort of hit on it. You just try to really talk passionately about what you want to do and why you think it's the right thing to do. And hopefully that takes care of itself. I haven't been in a pitch room in a while, uh, but that's what I used to do. You know, when I was on staff at an in, at, at, a, at an event company, 
Um, and I was like, wait a second, I'm, I'm supposed to be an art director. Why am I always standing here doing pitches? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I thought that at Envision, that's what they saw you. Like, I remember thinking, I remember being in those conversations when we were talking about doing proposals and things, because that's what I did when I was there, too. I did a lot of proposal stuff, yeah. got those done. But it was like you going in and pitching was great. Yeah, yeah, it's a necessary beast, right? And, um, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, you get a talk, which which we've established I like to do. So I guess I guess it was a nice fit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay, so um, let's go in and tell us what you do. Uh, basically, this is kind of what um, – if someone wanted to work with you, I could, you know, we just talked about you're an art director and events, but let's kind of say someone worked with you. Take us through kind of the process of what you do for clients. Yeah, so um, try to just basically provide uh, consistent visual support throughout uh, an event, a live event. Um, we get on and off of that train in many different ways, uh, with our different clients. Um, I guess the ideal project would be starting out and coming up with a conceptual, uh, look and feel for an event, then applying that to all the various pre-event media, on-site media and post-event media when, when necessary. Um, my forte over the years has become that sort of conceptual design and then motion graphics, um, and then, you know, presentation development and design, you know, hopefully the more animated high-end stuff versus, say, the, the um, slideware, if you will. Um, when I get my team involved, we cover print, uh, signage, um, and, you know, all points in between, email blast, digital communication, um, and, and whatnot. It, you can get really fragmented, you know, with all the apps that are coming out, all the, all the new crazy changes in digital media. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we try to stay up on that. We try to keep adding team members to, to be able to hit all facets. Um, But at the end of the day, I I feel like I'm trying to guide clients to keep things consistent, keep things on point and really, you know, so whenever you're on site and walking through those halls or in the general sessions rooms, you, you realize that it's all come together and, 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 and looks tight and crisp and clean. Very cool. And then you also do VJing, don't you? Ah, yes. Yes. So, so my true passion, if you will, is, is, um, is that real live mixing of visuals. Um, quite frankly, I don't do it a ton in the corporate arena um, because, you know, things need to be checked out and locked down. And whenever you're truly doing live mix VJing, you're, you're, you're improvising, you know, you're doing it on the fly. You're reacting to the feeling of the room, the feeling of the music, uh, so I do that a lot in, in for for um, parties, uh, maybe more progressive companies like say an Adobe who wants that experience, who's not afraid of the risk taking that's involved in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, when I'm doing it ultra passionately, I'm just volunteering for some band I like, you know, down at a, a local club, just to sort of release from the, the the grind of work and just go out there and have fun. Uh, but you know, as as trends are changing as people are are taking more visual risks with all the great projection mapping things that are starting to happen, um, I'm starting to get inquiries about that. And uh, it's awesome. I mean, that's, that's where I would love to sort of end my career is just fully on the sort of entertainment side of, of visual creation versus the ultra planned ultra lockdown side. Yeah. I guess there's a good mix of both because the lockdown stuff probably pays pretty well too. Lockdown stuff pays nicely. You know, when you, when you, when you tell a client, they're like, well, what's it going to look like? And you say, I don't know until I start doing it. They they usually, (laughs) they usually shy away from that. I don't know why. Uh, But, but um, I'm, I'm starting to learn how to bridge that gap and say, well, here's, here's the vibe of it. But for it to really feel right, you know, you need to, you know, if you're doing a walk-in and, and the room's only half full, you got to kind of keep it, keep it tempered. And then as, as the room fills up, it starts to build and, and grow and grow. So I'm learning how to sort of give them a preview into what things will look like as to not scare them away and send them running from my office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's basically what you, so you see that as the vision of the future for you at, at uh, for what you're um, do. I mean, is that, yeah. I, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, trying just to push into, into the clientele that really want design. They really want to, uh, you know, use not just, you know, us designers, we think it's all about us so often. I'm sure, you know, uh, you've never heard that one before, but, (laughs) but it's true when you can let, when you can let an AV team 
bring in their knowledge and, and really take their recommendations on what's going to make a room look great. When you can trust your producer's knowledge of, of say the talent they want to bring on stage or the, the, uh, the, the flow of how a show should run. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, down to the design end, like, Hey, you know, I think on this giant wide screen, this is going to look a lot better this way than say, um, that way, <laughs> that yeah. being not my way, no. <laughs> um, uh, you, you can really do some amazing things. And so, you know, in, in, in doing this for the past 10, 12, 15 years, uh, as you get more credibility, as you get more people that know you and you start to get trusted more, really what I find is, is the work just goes to a higher level. Right. Um, and, uh, so that's, so that's what I'm after, I guess you could say in the ideal project in the, in, in where the vision of the company is going is not just trying to take advantage of every single new technology that comes along, but really trying to utilize the talents of everyone on the team and trust each other to do our best work and, and make things look as, as stunning as they can look. Very cool. So you um, tell me about some of your trips. I know you just got back from a pretty cool trip. Yes, yes. I was just in Dubai with um, uh, Envision Communications and Cisco uh, Systems. They're probably not systems anymore, are they? They're just Cisco, uh -huh. showing my age, uh, doing the Internet of Things World Forum. Um, it's really been a great project to be involved with over the past three years. I've seen Barcelona. I've seen Dubai. Uh, we were in Chicago last year, a um, couple of great potential places that might go next year that I don't want to jinx, but you know, Francois, uh, and we'll see. Um, that's cool. Very and, cool. Yeah. So that's been uh, a real treat that I didn't expect, um, is seeing the world through work. Um, always wanted to do that. Um, I went to Istanbul just for, uh, fun. Uh, to hang a few days off that trip. And so I'm, I'm a little jet lagged from getting back there a couple days ago, but it was a brilliant city, amazing place to go. Um, I guess if I was going to sort of drop another name of, of a recent wonderful thing to be involved in, it would be Adobe Max through the good people at Pix Productions. Um, that show is everything we were just talking about. It's, it's letting design teams, letting, letting, you know, high-end vendors, if you will, really do their thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little intimidating to work for Adobe because they're, you know, they're the people that make the products I've built a career on. So you're like, oh, you know, you lock up a little bit and then you meet with them and they go, no, man, just let it, let it hang out. Show me what you'd want to do. And, and when they accept that, it's, it's just really great. Um, and then their internal designers, you know, I've learned so much just from watching them do their thing and, uh, it's, it's pretty funny to watch a guy from Adobe work in Photoshop and see them click a button that does something you would like should have learned 10 years ago that you didn't have <laughs> the button was there and you just like melt and go, wow, I would have saved myself like 8,000 hours of labor if I knew that button was there. <laughs> So that's that's been a real eye opening uh, and heartbreaking experience. <laughs> that's great. That's really great. Yeah. All right. So, um, and do you have anything coming up? That's uh, exciting. Let's see. Um, I'm heading to Adobe's Digital Marketing Summit in March. Um, coming up. That's going to be a fun show. Uh, that was the first big corporate event I ever did my VJing on. Um, so that was really great. We're not sure exactly what the media plan will be quite yet this year, but I'm sure it'll be stunning. Um, and honestly, like I'm taking a trip to Mexico with my family over nice. the holidays Where? So to shut the computer down and not work over the holidays. Uh, it'll probably be the first time in my freelance career that I've done that, um, which is a little bit sad, but uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited oh, about good. that, you it's know, good. taking some time off. Where in Mexico? We're going to the, um, uh, Yucatan Peninsula, sort of Tulum area. Um, you know, uh, speaking of love, bringing it back full circle, I've got my mother and father-in-law and then, uh, their sister. So I guess my wife's aunt and uncle are celebrating a dual 50th wedding anniversary. So we're just going to go down and sit in the sand and, and celebrate that. Uh, that's wonderful awesome. Event. Yeah. That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. And your wife is just way pretty and nice. And too good <laughs> for you. McCallan. Watch it, McCallan. <laughs> really too good for you. I have to say. <laughs> well, you know, as they say, I married up, right? Uh, she hasn't figured it out yet. Hopefully she won't figure it out. 
anytime soon. I always thought there was some sort of something happened there. Maybe there was a car accident or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to ask you a few questions that are just about you now. Okay. Um, Take us through a typical day. Do you have any kind of morning rituals that you do? Um, do you have any kind of sites you always go to to look at on the um, interwebs, um, just special foods, oh, any kind, anything you do? Um, it's interesting for other people to learn, I think, from kind of successful people on what they do. Well, so. it's interesting. I'm, I'm really working on that, honestly. Um, you know, the trip to Istanbul, I kind of had a little awakening just this last couple of days. Um, I was trumping through looking at some mosques and learning about how uh someone in the muslim religion um muslim religion i should say uh structures their day around prayer right mm -hmm. and i'm like wow, that's five times a day man that's a lot of praying but this tour guide told me these wonderful things it's like you know start your day with it end your day with it set milestones in the middle of your day with it and i was like boy i could really use that because really i'm i'm, I'm a bit frazzled <laughs> in my yeah. day right like yeah. I, I guess the honest picture of, of my day that I, is, is can I get in and get three hours of design work done before 9 a.m. before people start bothering me? And I love you, clients. You can keep bothering me. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, after my kids go to bed and my wife goes to bed, I'm back at the desk from 10 to 1 a.m., you know, ah. to get more design work done when no one will bother me. When really what it means is I just got to quit letting people bother me, right? Yeah. Um, and I use the term bother in a bad way, but, um, you know, I think... <laughs> A lot of, of sort of being a freelancer is about figuring out how to get your work done, but getting that next job. So I always want to answer the phone. I always want to answer my e email. I always want to take all those meetings to the point where it's potentially a fault. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think what makes some of my clients love me, that responsiveness also just crushes my ability to be um, uh, fluid in my design process. So I'm, I'm working on that. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, or if it just paints a picture of this frazzled person that I am. No, 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 no. no. And, I, and I and I think I think you're right. I think that's those are the hardest things to do. And so you work at night and then early in the morning. You just yeah, said, yeah, I, I do. Would you I, sleep I, ever? I, yeah, sometimes <laughs> not not nearly enough. Um, but it's starting to catch up with me, right? Like I'm 40 years old, just uh, just sort of slowing down a bit. Uh -huh. um, you know, in my 30s, I could I could like plow through that six hours at night three hours in the early morning, answer the phone all day, get home and give my family the attention they need and, and just be fine. But I was starting to really suffer in those early morning and late night hours, like just staring at the computer, not getting anything done. So it's sort of been a bit of an awakening that it's time to, to, to get a little bit more respectful of my own time and how hard I'm pushing my body. Uh, I could probably stand to drink a couple less beers here and there, uh, you know, so, so some changes like that. I, I don't know if it's my age and what I'm paying attention to, but like all these little fingers are starting to reach out to me and, and show me this, be it, you know, those little insights I gained in, in what I thought was just a vacation in Istanbul, sort of learning from another culture, uh, you know, links in social media, of like all these 40 ish year old guys going, boy, I had to reboot my life because I was falling apart. And you know, you read about it and you, you're nodding your head. You're going, yeah, well, that, that's me. That's me. That's me. So, you know, I, I think uh, I'm struggling to find a word, but I think it's just being um, trying to be a little more in tune to the reality we put ourselves in and, and, you know, realizing that if I answer that email four hours later, it's okay. I don't have to answer it through 30 seconds after it comes in. Right. Um, so, you know, just, just, uh, I, I guess the picture of my day is that I'm trying to make it a cleaner, more well planned experience than it currently is. It's very cool. And I, I thought to myself that, you know, you get in this industry and you travel around the world. Um, I think it's cool that you took time to go do something and you actually went to, a, oh, that's all this, crazy hate going on for Muslims and I really appreciated the stuff that you posted in um, wherever you posted it oh, yeah, yeah. or whatever that it was neat to see that you know you're in a total Muslim country yeah. basically and everybody's totally nice and friendly and wonderful yeah I mean to like to like get off the topic of, of work and, and into that you know reality of our world I, I'm glad you mentioned that because it was funny I I, 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 I grew up in the Midwest you know I come mm -hmm. from a, a, a part of the world that is is you know, currently very scared of, of some of the things that are getting shoved down their throat on the news. Mm -hmm. um, 
I booked this trip to Istanbul based on a couple friends' uh, recommendations of, hey, if you're going to be in Dubai and you want to see a city you've never seen, like, go there. It's, it's brilliant. And, you know, suddenly Russia and Turkey are kind of getting into it right, right before right. I trip. Uh, things are exploding with, you know, Donald Trump and all of, all of his rhetoric about, you know, not letting a Muslim person into our country, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I got a little bit of cold feet. I was like, oh, boy, should I be going there? And I just, the warmth of the people there, the, uh, the, the, the supreme feeling I recognized just walking the streets that like, wow, I'm, I'm a minority here. Like I'm like a tall white dude walking around to all these Turks. Um, I, I stand out and not a cross look once, you know, I would get in a conversation with someone and realize they're from Pakistan. I would get in another conversation with someone and, 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 you know, realize that they're, uh, you know, just completely culturally different from me. And it was nothing but a smile, nothing but a welcome. And, and so I was sort of moved to make that, that post of just saying, you know, experience it for yourself and decide what you feel about people. Don't let some yeah. guy barking at you on the news, tell you how things are, you know, and right. I, I'm also not naive to say there aren't some real massive problems in our world right now. Um, but I think it all stems from extremism, you know, yeah, I think my problems as a freelancer were from extremism, trying to work too much. You know, we were just talking about it, trying to do too much. And if you just pull back from that, take a breath, slow down and, and, and love yourself and love other people. Yeah. The things will come out of it. No, I agree. Man, we're I agree. Deep, aren't we? Yeah. No, but I think it's cool because it is like how many people they say there's like, what is it? Like 5% of people in the country have passports or something. Uh, Some amazing in our country? number in our country oh man i, I, so I people didn't, never heard that stat that's yeah crazy. so it's like i don't and I, I kind of pulled the five percent out of my butt but it's like <laughs> you know it is something it's very very low like i was so surprised like holy crap like because people don't leave the country and they just watch tv so yes. and to get people to watch tv you know if it bleeds it leads right absolutely so you got to get that stuff up there so it's just it's kind of it, it's i think it's great that you went out and travel and, and besides that besides all the where you went that just doing that for people. I look back on the time that I went, you know, on like that Ariba tour. I was like, why didn't I somehow figure out how to stay another a couple of days right. you know, and go do something? But I never did. I didn't have any money though, too. That was the other problem. But, yeah. you know, it's kind of like, you know, this day and age with Airbnb and stuff, you can really go and get a place for somewhere easy. You know, you don't have to stay in that hotel that you get plopped in with the event where you're in this fancy freaking hotel that you spend <laughs> an hour in, you know, exactly. <laughs> you know, you could be out and stay in a, you know, uh, Airbnb for $20 and you're sharing a room that you're just going to go sleep and leave. So I think it's great that you did that. That's oh, all. I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, man. Thanks. It, it was, it was a fantastic experience. And on that note of passports, I was looking at it on the, on the plane ride home and just thumbed through it and just go, man, this little book is like my prized possession. I mean, it, it's the coolest thing I have because of the stamps in it and the yeah. things I've seen through it. It's, it's totally, totally on. Yep. And then when you have to chain it in for the new one, have you had to do that? I did. I, well, my first and one. That was sad. I was stamps. like, oh, no. I was like, oh, now my new one has like, you know, like two Mexico. Better get on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I need to travel. All right. So um, what's the time? Like, oh, we're going to play time. Um, what, um, what did you want to be as a kid? Yeah, I guess if I'm being honest, I wanted to be a basketball player, right? Yes, because like, you are. Yeah, well, I, I play with the old guys, you know, once a week at the gym. And man, <laughs> am I hurting when I get out of there. Um, I would say beyond that, a little fun story. Uh, I, I wanted to be a journalist when I was in college. Like I, I was writing the sports page for my college newspaper. And um, I had this experience, uh, basketball. I loved the basketball team, probably covered them more than they deserve compared to the other wonderful sports on our campus. And I started to notice that the athletes on campus, when they saw me coming, they would start to clam up. And I was like, whoa, is this because they're afraid I'm going to write down what, what they're saying, right? Like, you know, we're not in an interview situation or anything else. And that really, it sort of turned me off to, to the idea of, being a journalist, I also misspell a lot of words. That doesn't help either. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I don't know if on a subconscious level that pushed me into into just general communication or I didn't know what I wanted to do instead. So I started, started studying PR and graphic design. Um, but uh, that's a long-winded way of saying for a while there, 
I thought I was going to be a journalist. And and now with what's going on with media, I mean, we were just talking about it. I'm so happy I'm not in that field. Yeah. Uh, although I think it could use m more and more and more good people. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that, that was part of my path, if you will. Very cool. So did you, so what um, book do you give to others? Do you have a book that you give people? Huh. Um, or a favorite book, I guess, too. If you no, can. I've never... I've read a never, book? Um, <laughs> I'm not very good at reading books. I get very distracted. Um, I'm trying to think if I've ever given, given anyone a book. I, I'm not I'm not much of a reader. I'm sort of a visual guy, right? So yeah. I'm, I'm more into like sharing photos and whatnot. But there's this use, great... You can, use, you can use Audible. Audible. Listen yeah. to Because you can get a free audio book. Ah. Through our audiobooks. podcast. Through our podcast. Audible yeah. trial backwards slash media's podcast. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, no, it's fine. I, I it's threw fine. an ad in there really quick. That's the first time I've ever done that. So. Oh, I doubt that. <laughs> um, so go ahead. Sorry, know, I didn't interrupt you. To, I'll, I'll, we'll have to, I'll have to follow up in the comments maybe. Something. There's this great book. I had this experience with Barry Zito, you know, the Oakland Days. Yeah. Um, he he read this book. Uh, oh, I just remembered it. Good. I didn't think I was. It was the Giants too, it's right? Called. Yeah, yeah. It, it, well, not when he, he was an A. That's when it mattered. Um, <laughs> Um, it's called Creative Mind and Success. And the name of the author is, is uh, slipping me at the moment. But um, the okay. story goes like, I read this interview with Barry Zito when I was a huge fan of his, where he was talking about this book, Creative Mind and Success. And, and the, the gist of this book is that it's a sort of like a old school help, help, self-help book, right? Like think positive, positive things will happen. You know, want this out of your life, get your mind in that mode and it will start to happen. And um, I ran into him at a restaurant in Walnut Creek once uh, early in my career. Uh, it was like a, a little thing where they were promoting the A's and, you know, he had slipped off to the restroom and, and uh, he, he's walking out of the restroom and like these throngs of beautiful women are trying to get his attention. And I somehow said, Hey, Barry, I, I, I wanted to talk to you about this book. And, and that made him stop and pay attention to me around all these beautiful women, which surprised me. And, um, <laughs> And I said, hey, I, I just wanted to thank you. I, I read that book, Creative Mind and Success, that you recommended. And, and his face just lit up and, and like, and then sort of scrunch, his eyebrows scrunched. And he's like, he goes, you read that whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? Well, yeah, like, you recommended it. And he was like, oh, man, that was so hard to read. It's so deep. And I'm like, yeah, it was. But I go, really? Like, great book. And he's like, oh, man, I could, I could see him go, wow, like. Like, boy, when I talk, maybe some people actually listen. <laughs> like, I think it was more like taking little nuggets out of it, maybe that were like helping him, you know, not walk batters. But, um, yeah, but yeah. It, was a, it was a funny experience. And I, if you, it's a great read. It's a tiny little book. Um, and I wish I could think of the author right now, but it's, it's a, I'm, it's a I'm sure it's very easy to find. Thing. We yeah. have the Googles that we Yes, the it. Googles. Um, how about podcasts? Do you listen to any podcasts? Well, I have recently been turned on to podcasts. Um, through the serial uh, podcast, uh, which, you know, is taking the world by storm. And, and there's a new uh, one now, you know that. Yes. I, I, it's killing me. Right. Cause I, I, I listened to like all of serial season one in like two days. Yeah. And I got to wait a week. This is, it's no, it's not good. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, through that, I got turned on to This American Life, which it's kind of funny to say you'd get turned on to that as much of a staple as it is. But I'm just such a music listener. I, I, I've really enjoyed the change of pace to listen to podcasts while I'm working, just sort of like different change of pace. And I'm certainly going to be digging through the archives of meetings podcasts. Uh, <laughs> God, you're good. You just have the... Uh... The, do you have brown eyes? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then what was I going to ask? A surreal, this Brown Live podcast. Plus, speaking of music, what's your favorite music artist at this time? And do you listen to Pandora or Spotify? And if so, what is your channel you listen to? Yeah. So, um, man, I am very eclectic on the music end. I, I would say my favorite bands probably of all time are are the String Cheese Incident and Yonder Mountain String Band. Uh, I'm very much into the 20 minute jams, you know, let your mind wander type of thing. Uh, but I have eclectic taste. I love bluegrass. I love hip hop. I love, uh, I would say of a sort of a well-known band. If people are like, who the hell is this guy talking about? Um, is Radiohead, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. I hung my, my musical moon, if you will. Um, I, I like Pandora because it takes the, the choice out of it. You know, when I get into Spotify, I lock up. I'm like, 
and I just listened to a bunch of albums I own sitting on the shelf over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I I I like. I like really familiar music when I'm working. It's hard for me to listen to new music because it takes my mind away from what I'm doing. So I find that I put on the same old things I love and it sort of just becomes background and kind of gets me in a tempo to, to work and, and get going. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think music's super important thing. And uh, cool. uh, live, live music is where it's at for me. And do you have a hula hoop? Do I have a hula hoop? I've, I've hula hooped many, many times, but I do not personally own a hula hoop. <laughs> I know why I thought, you is that, that the, is, yeah. And actually you turned me on to both those bands, String Cheese, Incident, and Yonder Mountain. I remember way yeah. back when. And, yeah. Uh, went off to uh, Telluride. Wow. Uh, yeah. And with the Heasters and the uh, friends of ours. Isn't that a great place to see music? It's oh my like, God. It's the best thing in the world. That place. Yeah. I'd love to go back there again someday. Yeah. Um, I almost said fish, but that immediately makes people groan. Like, like, oh, he likes fish. Or it makes them, you know, want to crawl through the podcast and give you a hug. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. Um, Okay, if you could uh, time travel, where would you go and why? Ooh, man, I would I would certainly go back go go to the future, like beyond my lifetime. I, I think so much has changed in my lifetime, technology wise. So much is going to change, and mm-hmm. what I hope is the rest of my life. Uh, that I, I'm just so fascinated to see what's going to go down, you know, eons beyond my lifetime. Um, and I guess if I was going to go back. Um, oh man, I can't even answer that. That's so many things to, to sort of check out and see. You can just but, look and see what your sons are up to. Really? You know what I'm going to say? And this is pretty bad. I, I would go back about two, well, a week ago I was in Dubai and I would come back in time so I could watch the Timbers win the MLS cup live. Oh. In I, I've been a season ticket holder for three years. I've loved sports my whole life. My team, the team that I'm actually supporting has never won the championship. Like, while I'm an active supporter and here, here it happens. Timbers win and I'm halfway around the world working. Uh, <laughs> I've heard that those games are just crazy fun. The, 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 the Timbers there. The Timbers experience uh, on With just a regular off, season day, yeah. you know, a, a regular season game feels like every game feels like you're in the playoffs. It's, it's one of the, it's what it's the thing that keeps me grounded. I go to the games with my boys. Uh, I've absolutely fallen in love with with the sport of soccer through the Timbers. And uh, if you've if you if you want to have a, a, a blast at an American sporting event, make your way to Portland someday and see a Timbers game. It's yeah. Last time fantastic. I was in Portland, I walked by the stadium and I was, your game. I was I, yeah because I was te- I took the airport. No, it wasn't a game. It was just starting. People were kind uh-huh. of pulling in, but I went to, took the train to the airport. What a great system Portland has! I like was staying at an Airbnb for a conference there, and I walked past there to the little what do they call it? The Max or something? Yep, Max Line. Yep. Yeah, I took it to the airport. Just fantastic. But uh, yeah, they're a professional soccer team in Portland. If those of you don't know, and you could call Jason; he has season tickets. If you need tickets, <laughs> he'll take you to the game. Just say I heard you on the meetings podcast. I'm out of town a lot. They're probably available <laughs> sometime. <laughs> okay, um, music. Ba-da, 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 ba-da. What's um, what's something that's working for you right now? Like uh, an app or something, like uh, app or a uh, vitamin or an exercise program, time saver. Is it something you're using right now? That's I mean I know you're you're now a, you use Skype now I heard so yeah yeah I'm a <laughs> big Skype user <laughs> my first Skype call today it's like I'm a Neanderthal um, I would say something that's working for me is trying to drink more tea than coffee nice uh, that that allows you to drink it all day and not be shaken what kind um, of tea I, I'm an Earl Grey man ah keep it pretty simple. Um, Let's see what else is working for me. Biking. I'm riding a bike to work instead of driving. Nice. Very Portland thing to do, but it's uh, the fresh air wakes me up in the morning, and I, I feel like I'm doing a teeny little small part to help our world out. Uh, so I guess those are two easy things that are working for me now. What's the best advice you've ever received? Hmm. Well, that's a good question. Um, the best advice I've ever received would probably be. Uh, don't be a jerk. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was a different <laughs> word substituted in there for jerk. <laughs> um, ass, ass. Or it rhymes with Rick. Um, and, ah. uh, uh, and, and that's, that's gone a long way for me, right? Like, like if you can just as 
in this industry, man, there's a lot of times that people do things that would make you want to respond to them as a real jerk. And if you can just bite your tongue and get over it and stay positive, usually uh, good, good results will come from it. Yeah. And it's a very small world and it's a very insular business. Um, it is. It's, it's very freakishly it's small. crazy. Yeah. Uh, don't burn bridges. Um, but all you young designers who want to get in, in, into this and take, take, take my, take my job for me. It, it's, it's a huge world. It's, it's a hard world. To get into. <laughs> There's so many of us. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's good advice. You're good. You're, you're giving out advice to uh, you switch. I like how you flip that question. Um, what's your favorite event to attend and why is it so compelling? I, I say industry event usually, but, just event in general is good because I know you go to a lot of concerts and, yeah. and events. What's your favorite event? I know My, you said Adobe Max is one that you really like to work on, but you'll probably like to go there too, huh? Yeah, I would actually having or worked did, Max now, I would love to go to it as an attendee one day. Not yeah. not like because they fired me from it. Like that would not be a good way to go. But uh, but, Wait, but what? <laughs> was that the one you like, or was it digital marketing one you're working well, on? So that? so both the, the Adobe Max is is probably the one I would want to attend just from a you know, as a creative to get in there and learn more about the softwares and, and, and all the cool things that they're pushing out and, and changing. Um, DMS, that's the digital marketing summit. It's more like how they're using their products to uh, allow companies to market more fluidly, you know, live uh, experiential stuff. Um, boy, it's funny. As many events as I've worked on, I've gone to very, very few. Um, so just oh, events in general, then. Events you in general, talk. though, I have an event that I would say it is the Northwest String Summit. It's an event I've taken my family to every year for the past 10 years since we've lived in Portland, Oregon. It's a bluegrass music festival. Oh. It's got a wonderful vibe. Uh, I, I think I like it because you sort of chuck reality at the door. And you descend down into this canyon and camp out, and it's just nothing but music and hanging out and friends. And uh, there's no, no internet down there. Cell phone won't even work. So it's like nice. this four day detachment from reality that, that we do every year, you know, nice to reconnect with my wife at it, watch my kids grow up at it. It's uh, it's fun. Yeah. And that's great for them too, for the memories they'll have. And you're introducing them to music, which is fantastic. Absolutely. Well, if only yeah. they would do their piano practice without complaining. <laughs> 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 All right. So um, last question. If you could talk to the high school senior you, what would you tell yourself? Be nicer to people. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't see you being mean to anybody. Man, yeah. I think I was a real scrawny guy. Like I had a sharp tongue, you know, right? Uh, like, and uh, I can see that, yeah. And, and uh, I mean, I, I wasn't this like bully or anything, but, you know, you, you think about some of the things you see on the news with, with all these kids that feel like they got to go shoot up a school or something. I'm like, man. Man, I wonder if I would have ever said something to somebody to set them off like that. That's yeah. a very morbid way to end this interview. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, but no, no, I, I, I'd also go back to that confidence thing we talked about earlier. Like there's there's just a lot of things in our world that will try to hold you back. And uh, I think if you just believe in yourself and, and go for it, you know, amazing things happen. And it took, it took me a few years of getting out of uh, – out and on my own to, to realize that. So that's, that's probably the kick in the pants. I would go back and give myself, um, uh, if I could talk to the high school me. Very cool. Okay. So where can people get a hold of you if they want to, um, they want more Jason, they want to hire you to do some, uh, some, uh, art direction for their events. Where would, yeah. they, where do they get a hold of you? Where do they find you? Yeah. Email is probably the best place. Jason at make Um, Facebook. Oh, one. wait a minute. Oh, Let me ask you the question before I'm no, no, that's great. I like, I'm sorry I didn't interrupt you, but it just made me think that was the one thing. What, where does Make Animals come from? Oh, I'd love to tell the story. So it's a two-pronged story. Um, there was a lyric from a song by the band 311 uh, that always made me reminded me of my childhood. And that lyric was, savor the sun, but when the clouds come, make animals, right? Make animals out of the clouds. And when I was a kid, and I'd be super bored riding around in the car with my grandma, rest her soul. She, yeah, I'd be like, Hey, you know, I didn't have an iPhone to play with or anything like this. Right. So we, are we there yet? Are we there? And she would say, well, just look out the window at the clouds and make animals out of it. Wow. Tell me what you see. So it was always my first memory of being creative or trying to use my imagination. So whenever I needed a business name, there it was. Very cool. Wow. Yeah. 
All right, now go back and tell us where people can find you. Jason oh. at makeanimals.com. Uh, that would be my email. That's the best place to get me. I'm on it more than I would like to admit. Mm -hmm. And then after that, just hunting me down in social media, probably. Uh, yeah, I would say go look at the Facebook. Yeah, the Facebook it's page. It's facebook.com slash make animals. Make I, animals. I, yeah. I think there's nothing in between there. Uh, no. But if you just search make animals on, on the Facebook. Yeah. The Facebook. And, and I'll uh, have it on our, if you want to come to the Meetings Podcast site at all, have links to Jason's stuff there and Maybe I'll steal some pictures from there and put them on there too. So, but go I'm to make Facebook tomorrow for a meeting. I've never been down there. Oh, nice. I've heard they got great murals. I'm looking I'm sure it. they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Jason. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks. And, uh, it was great awesome. talking to you. Yep. And I hope to have you back on another time to chat more. Yes. We'll, uh, we'll talk about, we'll talk about you next time. Ooh. Maybe I could be a guest interviewer and we, we would do Ooh. One, and you, you would wow. tell us about you. That would be insanely boring, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thanks. That was fun chatting with Jason. Uh, he's a great guy. Uh, thank you again for our, to our sponsors, IMAX America, IMAX Frankfurt, and AV for Planners. If you are interested in learning more about um, AV for Planners, head over to avforplanners.com backwards slash AV Power Pack to sign up for a free consultation to talk about it. And you can get free tips and tricks for site surveys and what to look out for for your AV and labor there. You can also check out, we put a nice clause up there, um, which you can add to your hotel contract if you want more control over what you're being charged for audio visual. If you have any questions or comments about the podcast, if you just want to say hi, um, email me at meetingspodcast at gmail.com. And finally, if you have a moment, head over to iTunes and give the show a rating. It really helps the podcast get found by um, other event professionals. Uh, thank you for listening. I really appreciate you, and I will see you next time. We appreciate and thank you for listening to the Meetings Podcast. Please email with any questions or comments to meetingspodcast at gmail.com. Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. The Meetings Podcast theme music is brought to you by the Delgado Brothers, which can be found at delgadobrothers.com. <laughs>